All right, I'm going to do uh, some tour six here and play my pin chest. It's been about all I've been doing. I've been kind of taking the week, not doing a lot of practice, not doing a lot of stuff, just playing my pin chest. Just dinking around, taking some time off. So we get going down here, so we can get any of the holes we're looking for for the coast to coast tournament. Juniper Point, hole nine, par five. We're looking for two, six, five, and seven. So this is not one of the holes that we're looking for. And I am absolutely dinking around on this hole. Not against a 9-2 headwind, I'm not. I guess I'm not dinking around on this hole. I know I'm using a Marlin. <laughs> That's all I know. So that club, three rings is five, six, seven, eight, eight, two, is that right? It's one six per ring. So three ring or one seven, three rings is five. Nice, very nice. Nice shot in the fairway. See if we can get over there. See if we can just get all the way over. There's the red line. Be up in this area right here. I'm gonna push the limits. Nine two two four six eight nine two. About four and a half rings, give or take. Max curl. Let's put some overpower on it. Hitting it perfect. See if that's if I can get the second bounce to get me over the sand. <laughs> I don't know if there's enough curl on that club. It's I I think if you had an APOC five, <laughs> if you had an Apocalypse five, you could get because it's got it's got curl and the top spin that you could probably get over here with very little with very little effort. But the the extra mile doesn't have, even though it's got a little more at level nine, it, it doesn't have enough curl. I don't think so. Not unless you really pinched up down there on that uh, first landing spot. And I'm kind of unwilling to do that. If you're down there in the rough or in the sand in that particular spot, you can get on from there. So there is the opportunity to recover. Super difficult at that angle to get to the cup. Let's see if we can put that massive. I'm gonna go right dead center in the middle. It's about two per ring, so I'm gonna go roughly two and a half rings. I'm gonna put all my curl on it. Hit it 700 rings great to the right, which will probably put me in the sand. Wow, I got lucky, lucky. Can't be good, be lucky, that's the rule. That's the motto. It's like three o'clock in the afternoon, 3.42, and I'm on my second cup of coffee. That's that's how far behind I am today. Eagle. Let's see if I can force a shootout. Still got a little bit of work to do here. Maybe we can pick up one of those uh, par threes that we're looking for. And from this distance, wind might play a little teeny bit of a factor. We'll see. Oh, and it will if you hit it three rings great to the right or left. In the hole! Once again, it can't be good, be lucky. I think wind was a little bit of a factor there. 
It's hard to tell when you're that close. Usually if you're on the fringe, wind's not going to be a factor. Usually. If the wind's not too bad, I'm going to use the island. It's really the only way to, it's the only serious way to go if you're trying for a hole in one. Let's go for the island. What the heck? My opponent's going for the island. I'll go for the island. So at Apocalypse 2, I think that's kind of in the same range as the extra mile. So it's somewhere in the 2 per ring, 2.1, 2.4, somewhere in that neighborhood. And that's where they'd like to hit. Man, that looks pretty close. There you go. I'd pull back. Eh, maybe. Maybe. It might be. I, I can't remember what the accuracy is on a level two apocalypse. I think it's around where an extra mile is, so that might be about right. That might be right. Looked right. There you go. <laughs> maybe. I'll do the same thing. It's, I'll do the same thing here, dude. So we'll, we'll go for the island. What the heck? What the heck? So there's a five, two is about two and a half, two and a half rings. The thing here is you got to hit it perfect. Hitting it perfect. See if I got my wind adjustment right. Right where I wanted it. It'll roll back towards the cup and be a little to the left and short. That shot's not a bad shot, especially if you're playing. If we if that comes up in in rookie tournaments and we've got you can take it with a low wind ball. You get a really good win there. That's that's really the way to go at it if you're trying to go at it for a hole in one. It's not impossible to hit a hole in one from the right, but it's pretty close. Your odds are low. Let's get some. Ch let's let's move them out just in case we get somebody who wants to replay. I haven't seen a lot of people want to replay because a lot of people are down here practicing. So we will. See what's happening. See if we can get one of the holes we're looking for. Hopefully everybody's having a, uh, a good day. Hope everybody's being safe. Here in the United States, they've opened up. It cracks. I'm, I, I'm just amazed. A bunch of states have opened up. The last two days we've had spikes here in the United States. The deal is, is everybody talks about it's flattening out. It's not, uh, the trend may be going down as far as the overall percentage, but the deal is, is that we're still at 30,000 new cases a day. So that's not, uh, it's not exactly good. Hitting it one wing great to the right. If I was going to hit it one wing great to the right or left, right is better. I had a lot more room on the right. That'll help me maybe clear it. Just barely. Just barely. The problem is when you go up 30,000 a day, that number's big. That's 210,000 a week. Probably by t end of tomorrow, we're going to be over a million people in the U.S. with Corona. And most of them are still sick. All right, where am I at in my club? I am right at Max Grizzly. Or minimum grizzly, which is 2.0 per ring. Let's get where we can kind of see what's going on here.
2.0. It's about a half a ring. Let's see if we can hit this perfect. Get in the cup. Hitting it perfect. Give myself a look. Got a chance. Get in the hole, ball. Get in the hole. Obatros. Woo! In the hole. That will work. Get in the hole. This hole right here was in the uh, 2019 Community Cup. It is very albiable. In tournament play, if you bring a bigger ball there, this is a great hole with an ap apocalypse because you can get around the corner. But if you bring a ball that's got more side spin on it, like a Kingmaker or a Katina, and it's really good to bring a Kingmaker just because on the second shot, it puts you deeper into, into your club. And you can get up there with a short iron. And it really does just boil down to hitting it perfect. If you hit it perfect. Man, you got a serious shot. Serious shot at Albie. See if they'll replay. Come on, man. Come on. Guess not. Let's get back out there. Open up the chest. See if we can do our eight in our pin chest in eight so we can get a putt on everyone. It's always disappointing when it takes nine or ten to get your pin chest. Ideally, fairway to fairway to green. You can usually get it done unless your opponent uh, sinks a great one. And I'm telling you, this is this is brutal with a with a marlin. But let's try it and let's see here. I'm gonna switch to uh, this bag right here. And the wind is gonna take me out there about eight miles per hour. I'd like to be there. So I'm going to go two, four, six, eight. Let's take the side wind out and then put all of the power back in. And let's do a max overpower. Hit it two rings great to the left. That might be too much to the left. See? Good bounce. Yes. Closer we can get to them shadows, the better. I mean, when we're hitting with a marlin, you need to be every bit of four something. Because this next shot is the thing is, is that like big ball, big ball doesn't help you that much on the drive. Big ball helps you on the second shot. Second shot's brutal with a small ball. Getting over nicely. It's probably a little shy of four. Three seventy nine. All right. If I can get to this fairway, that's the key. Max top spin. Okay, where I'd really like to be is right about there. That means I need to be about four miles an hour. So I'm going to add on 10%. So that's going to be seven, let's say eight. So that's eight, four. So two, four, six, eight. Yeah, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, right there. And I'm going to add on just a little bit of power to pick that up. Hitting it perfect. See if that was enough to get me out of that rough. Trying to do that rough bump. See if that was enough to get me out. Get, get me out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Close. So that's how you do it with a marlin. I wouldn't recommend that. That is, this is, this hole is super tough to get an eagle, even if you bring a big ball. But the key there is, is that I brought out the right clubs. 
And Big Topper is a great, great club for the drive. And it really, the big dog is, is the key for that, that hole. I mean, that wouldn't have been possible without the big dog because it has tons of power and it has tons of topspin. And the ball guide, when you're doing a rough bump like that, is not nearly as important as the power and the topspin. So having that bag, I carry that big topper, big dog bag just for holes like this. I mean, there's some holes you get on and it's, it's my utility bag and it's amazing how many holes that, that club combo works on. And if you don't have that club combo, you're not going to be able to get the results you're looking for. And when I get done here, I'm going to pause for a second so I can call the clan president who called me just a second ago back. Ooh, that was a nice shot. Well played. Good game. Good game. Let's see if they'll rematch. If they rematch, he'll just have to wait. No dice. All right. Give me one second. I'll call you right back. Or I'll, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Let's, let's get at it. It's more Tour 6. Let's see if we can get the holes we're looking for. Talking to my clan president, Mike D from Texas, Dallas, Texas. The Deep Ellum Blues. My favorite band is from Texas, from Austin, Texas. The Asylum Street Spankers. <laughs> See if my opponent can get over there with that 9-5 headwind. That was a massive headwind to hit against. I'm going to be doing the bounce over. See if they can get up. Looks like they're going towards the trees. That is no bueno. They might be able to make it from there, though. If they got a spitfire. With this hit from here, it won't matter. We have very little chance of getting in the hole from here, but we'll just go that way. So two, four, six, eight. Put a little teeny bit of left hand curl on it just to keep us from drifting down there towards the tree. Hitting it perfect. Just rolling out there in the clear. Any club will work on that. You can do that shot right there. If you got lower developed clubs, that bounce over shot with an extra mile. You just have to make sure if you're doing it with lower developed clubs, it it tends to want to stay pretty close to where the rough is right here by the trees. And it'll at, at the end of its run, it'll drop. It'll roll down to the right. So if you put just that little teeny bit of curl on there, that left hand curl, it'll keep the ball in the fairway and it won't drift down into the rough. Because that spot down there, if you've got lower developed stuff, is about where you'll end up. They have a serious shot from there to get in. They can recover. It was very wise of them to just lay it up. Big dog. There's Max Club. What kind of distance we got? Yeah. So it's two per ring, 2.1 per ring, somewhere in that neighborhood. So there's eight. Put a little bit of curl just to bring it back to the hole. Hit me perfect. See how close we can get. It's gonna be close. I've made a ton of albies on that. It's just a totally blind shot when you're doing curl. Trying to get around those trees. I've laid it up underneath on that shot I was talking about, just, just popping it over and it ends up right down there at the tip of that, right where the trees start. 
and coming out, you got to put a little bit of curl to wrap it around those trees. And I've sank that alby quite a few times on that shot. Total luck. A little bit outside, just a bit outside. Get our putt. In the hole, eagle. Let's see if our opponent will replay. Give them a chance to get their money back. 19th hole bandit, the master. Master, master. Come on, dude. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. You can hit that replay. Come on. Come on, man. Don't make. Come on. You're wasting my time. Come on. All right. Let's open up that chest, clear some spots just in case we get somebody that wants to replay. Getting some unknown club cards. Adding to the mix. Southern Pines, hole four, par four. This is not one of the holes we are looking for. And I want to take this so I can come at it with a uh, high grizzly. I'm just going to lay it up out there. I'm going to try anything special. Five, three. A little teeny bit of curl. Just in case I hit it 700 rings great to the left. Just laying it up. Give myself that look at that rough bump. You can put some overpower on it or bring your extra mile and or your big topper and you can get it way up there by them shadows. A couple tournaments ago, this was in, I tried it from the right hand side, hitting it with a five power ball and trying to get way up there into my Hornet range. And you can get up there into your short iron range. You can get way up there. But I found it was inconsistent getting up into the right spot. Here you can get up in front of those shadows and you can get into your short iron. If you're right in front of those shadows and you got a three power ball, you can get into your short iron range. There's max, there's man, there's mid. So we're eking towards that. Maybe 1.1, 1.2 per ring. It seemed like we were doing like a 10% adjustment here. So it'd be two nine, it'd be three, it'd be about three three. One point one, that's three three. You can do three rings. I'm trying to hit it perfect. Oh, hit it great. Hit it great. And just a little great to the left. Perfect would have been nice to see. But no, we you got to hit it great to the left. It was an error somewhere between my stylus and my touch screen. Using my five inch long, quarter inch wide fiber, carbon fiber tipped stylus. Close. Close. I shot. In the hole.
maybe we will get one of the holes that we are looking for. What are we looking for here? We're looking for Juniper Point Hole 2. We're looking for City Park Hole 1. We're looking for Juniper Point Hole 7. One of these shootouts, I keep I keep getting there. I'm, I got the wrong stuff. I really like to play it with a Saturn, and I've been getting on it with a Grizzly. This is not one of the holes that we're looking for. What do I got? The rock. The rock. I'm going to hit it from over here. Why not? Why not? I'm going to wedge my blue rings up. Maybe one and a half top spin on it. Eight five. There's five. Six, seven, eight, five. Put some curl. Hitting it perfect. See if we can catch the fairway there or if the sand messed me up. Just a bit too much topspin. Maybe one would have been better. When I first started playing, that was the only side. Came here with my hammerhead three, and that was the uh, that was the best way to go at it. This way right here is another excellent way to go at this hole. And with the wind that we have pulling over the sand, that side over there is not a bad side because then you don't have to worry about the distortion of the rings from the sand as far as pulling the wind out. Great choice by my opponent. Get very close from there. That might be in the hole. Whew, that was close. Nice shot. Nice shot. Good game. Good game. Let's see if they'll replay. Now they took my coins. Maybe they're, maybe they'll, nope, no dice. Nobody wants to replay. What's the deal? Making me go back through the steps. All right, all right, I can do that. We can do it. You get a better chance of getting the holes you're looking for if you replay people. Southern Pines, hole seven, par four. This is not one of the holes that we're looking for. Hole See if my opponent will get up there nicely. You can get up there nicely with a Marlin QB, max overpower. You got tons of fairway. If you start off way to the left and put on all the curl, the deal is, is that even if you hit it two or three rings great to the left, you're still going to end up in the fairway. And if you hit it two or three rings great to the right, you're still going to end up in the fairway. Very nice. Taking a marlin. What do I got? Got my rock on. Let's put the extra mile on and we'll go all of it. I'm going to face right towards, I want to be right out there towards the rough. Let's take the wind out. It's one and a half rings. I always have to remind myself I'm not doing a hook when I do these shots. And it would be better to hit that great to the right, not great to the left. Because you'll end up in the rough. <laughs> and I t and I said, you can hit it a couple rings. If you're using your QB, you can hit it a couple. You can hit about three rings great to the left or the right, and you'll be fine. But with an extra mile, it doesn't have as much curl. Would have been a better shot with a rock. And this is, from that distance... Up there, I might, I might be able to recover with my Nirvana. Maybe. I should be able to get myself pretty close up here in the front. Give myself a serious chip. Maybe. 
Yeah, well, with a gar with a marlin, maybe. Maybe. It'll be tight. You will be close. At this point, I don't want to mess around too much. I just want to get up there. So four, six, the max. It's about uh, two and a third rings. Two rings great to the left. That'll probably put me in the rough. And it will. I'm not making it easy on myself. Rough to rough. What do I always say? The it's so common to go from one rough to the next rough or from one sand trap to the next sand trap. And here I am doing what I say is uh what you don't want to do. You want to play fairway to fairway to green, not rough to rough to rough. Let's see if I can recover. As Ben Hogan said, two bad shots and a great shot is still birdie. Should have no wind effect from this distance. Hit a one ring great to the right. In the hole. Close enough that I was able to recover. Woo! <laughs> It, it's all about that pin chest. You don't want to have to do nine in order to do an eight pin chest. Even if I lose in the shootout, it's still a win. We get to go see if we can find one of the holes that we're looking for. Here we go. Oh, we're just not going to get any of the holes that we're looking for today. That's just how it goes. So last time I put on where we got, oh, jeez. I'm going to do the wind again. How much do I have there? Maybe enough. Maybe. Maybe. And I think I'm going to do the one in a sliver because I'm going against headwind. There's five. There's six. Six. You know, one ring grade on the inside. A little bit better speed because of that headwind. Pretty close. Totally blind curl shot. Get in the hole. See if my opponent does that or if they go from the other side. Normally I do play the last time we were on this hole where my opponent was playing over here. That's my normal way of going at it one on one, but I'm uh, trying to remember how to come at these holes from a different side. So just playing them a little bit different. That's the cool thing I like about par threes is there's usually more than one way to come at it. Some par threes, there's just one way. I mean, that's just the way. But some of these par threes, there's multiple ways to come at it. And if you got the wrong wind, it's important when you're on those par threes that you practice, that you take a look at other options because you may get into a situation where the wind is blowing in such a way that your normal way that you'd like to come at that par three doesn't work. And so having another shot in your bag that you can fall back onto, it's like, hey, the wind's not conducive for that shot. So I'm going to go ahead and take this other shot. Because you see that all the time where people get out on a hole and the wind's not blowing the right way for the shot that they want. And instead of going, hey, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to take a different shot. They force the issue. It's nice to have multiple shots in your bag. How many I got here? Two more to go. Dose. Some more commons. 
I got a guardian there. A guardian is the only rare that I'm still working on trying to get it up. Most of the rares, the, the deal is, is that for most of the rares, the difference between level eight and level nine, it's, it's, it's not worth the effort. If you've got stuff that you can put into your club card trading, it's better to work on your epics, spend those points on your epics. There's three, well, there's actually four ways to go at this hole. Um, one of them is coming out into this area right here. Another one is bouncing from here and getting out on this side of the trees. The other one is to, you, you can try what my opponent's doing and get into this area and bounce up so that you can get way up here. And the other thing you can do is come here and just lay up like right here. Just bounce over from here and lay it up right there and go straight at it. It's better coming out the green on this side. So, and it's actually doing the little layup shot as a shot that a lot of people don't do. But you do have a better to look at it if you're on the right hand side. And it's not nearly as dangerous because if you end up in the sand from here, you could be in a spot of bother. Now my opponent looks like they're in the clear. So they are nice. Nicely done. I'm going to just do the layout there just to show you what it looks like. See if we can do it. Switch to my accurate bag. Take our number two bag. Just doing the little layup shot instead of trying to get over, just laying it up right here. Just laying it up right, right in this area right here. 1.9. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a little over two rings. We're way downhill right there. Maybe, I think that's perfect, perfect. And just laying it up right there. You got a nice wood shot coming into the green and you're on this flat side. So if you get on this hole and you got a really bad wind, instead of trying to press the issue or if you don't like the shot going to the left, and I'm not a real big fan because of the way that you have to come into the cup, you've got to bounce over this sand and you want to try and get as far to the right so that you can try and catch that flat area up there. And so I find sometimes the wind is not conducive with what my opponent did where they bounced over. And instead of forcing the issue, you can just lay it up right there. You still have the good look at it. You're just in a wood. Instead of a long iron. It's not as bad now as it used to be, but there, when the game first came out, it wasn't, there wasn't really an issue of hitting on the transitional line between like the green and the fringe or the fringe and the fairway. And then they did some updates where they changed their algorithm a little bit. And there was a spot there where you would hit that transitional line and it would go a billion miles. Nice shot. Nice shot. Nice shot, man. Crowd goes wild. They've kind of changed that where they've got their smoothing down. And so it doesn't happen as much as it used to, but it's never really a good idea to hit right on that transitional line. Kind of like where my second bounce is. Right at the cup, five, seven. There's five, seven. Ah. If I was going to hit it great one side or the other and it still have a shot, it'd be great to the left, but uh, that was not what I was looking for. No, it was not what I was looking for. Damn it. That means I didn't get a putt. That means it's going to take me nine to do my pin chest. See if they'll let me have my money back. Or at least give me a shot. Nope. Take my money and run. at that oh we got club card trade in available so we must be after after five let's see what we got today maybe we'll get something good 
the end bringer. I think that might be the very first time I've ever had the Endbringer in the uh, club card trading. And maybe I've got it once before. Maybe. How much time we got on the video? 40 minutes? We, we, I may have enough time to finish two. If the video ends short, thanks for watching. Juniper Point, hole eight, par four. Is this one of the ones we're looking for? We're looking for two, six, five, and seven. Nope. Oh, we got to go for this. Even though we're up against that nine, nine headwind, we got to, got to, got to go for it. Come on. Two, four, six, eight, nine, nine. It's almost a full ring set. That puts me two into power. Hit it. Two rings great to the right, which may not be a factor here, but it'll definitely be a factor on this next bounce. In the drink. <laughs> I guess it's going to take me 10 to do my pin chest. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Maybe we'll get better win and we'll end up on, on, on one. That's what we need to happen. So we'll be on and two to save. We'll get the eagle to save the birdie. As long as we don't get a big headwind, we might I might have a shot. Very wise decision. It's a difficult shot to get to the cup right here without ending up in the sand. There is a serious adjustment there to get up. You're right there, so that's about two rings and a power. I'm going to be over just a little. Give myself a little bit more of that fairway. I'm going to take the side wind out, which is about two rings. And I'm going to put that power back in it. Do a little bit of this. Hit it one ring great to the left. <laughs> Almost made it over. At least I gave myself a shot. Getting a hole. Now there is a really good chance here. This is a very tough, typically this is a good area. My opponent's being very wise there by just trying to get on and foregoing, trying to really go at it. Trying to get over into this area right here and go straight at it. If you've got a backspin club, you've got a better shot there, but the wind adjustment is it's one of those ones where you need to push it you need to take out the win and then you need to push it former forward almost the whole cut so just getting up on the green and limping up there like that is definitely the high percentage way when you're playing one-on-one -on -one to uh, win chests Wind from this distance is really not going to play a factor. So I just need to hit it perfect. Possibly great to the left. Hitting it perfect. In the hole! Saved my birdie. <laughs> Recovered. Even a blind nut, even a blind nut finds a squirrel every now and then. Is that the way the saying goes? <laughs> I think maybe I got that wrong. In the hole. And they damn near missed that. 
Good game. Going to a shootout. Yeah, I might have an F for the whole, whole the whole, the the whole deal here. Let's see if we can get a, a three point seven win. I'm gonna, I'm going for the island. I'm, I'm gonna play the island shot. We all know how the shot to the right works. I usually try and get up here towards where the fairway flares and it starts to come out. I like to get up there with my extra mile. It's about one backspin, maximum left-hand side spin, max curl, and try and whip the ball up. The problem is, is that if you want to get a hole-in-one from that side, you need to be way up here at the top and ride that rim down so that it falls down towards the cup. See if they can get it in the hole. And the problem with taking the shot with an extra mile is that you have you have one option, perfect, or you miss the island. That's the deal. You know what? Eh, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. We'll go over here. Gonna say I could put a hurt on my opponent right there by just laying it up over there. You're super easy. It's three point three, so that's about a ring and a half. Put a little bit of curl just to bring it back to the cup. Hitting it perfect. See if we can get the roll back down to the hole and see if we can get it in the hole. A little bit off. Just a bit outside. If you're playing one-on-one -on -one and your goal is to, I mean, you're playing for chess. When your opponent makes a mistake like that, put the hammer down on them. I'm just dinking around. So, but if you're out there playing, don't don't take that risky shot. Take the easy layup. Pound it into the sand right in front of them. There's nothing more to piss them off than to do that where they're in the sand and then you aim in the sand right in front of them. Take the wind out and just drive it into the sand. I've had people get extremely irritated at me flashing the red, red, I'm unhappy face. Well, guess what? I'm not the one that took your shot. City Park, hole six, par five. City Park, hole six, par five. We finally, the last hole, we finally got one. And I'm taking, I am bringing this bag right here. I, what I really want to bring is that I want to play this with a guardian. I want to see what the guardian looks like at the top of the hill. I want to come up into this area and I, it's not going to take a lot of topspin to get me up there. Maybe two top spin. You can hit it over and you can hit it down into that flat area down there. I'm just trying to see what it looks like. I really want to explore this top area. And if you hit it down there into the bottom and you end up going through it and end up in the rough below. Hold on one second. I think that's about a ring and a half. If you end up in the rough down below and you've got a Nirvana, you can easily get on. Isn't it perfect? But I want to see, like, if you've got lower developed stuff and you come here with a big dog and you just lay it up and try and get us. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. And I will tell you, you ain't getting any farther than that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You can't get much farther than that. But if you can just lay it up, it, and there'll be a thing about bringing. I would bring a 100 percent accurate club, my QB or my rock. And just try and lay it up there on the top to see if you can bring your guardian or your big dog to engage this upper to try and bring it up. You can hit and get down into this mouth down here. And if you end up in the fairway on the other side, like I said, you can get up. It's not, I will, I will tell you that it's almost to, if you went there and you really tried to hit that island and really tried to roll through this rough and end up in the rough on the other side, not do the rough bump right there and you end up over there, you have a better shot than you do if you drive over to, to this area. You have a better shot. 
And I'm just seeing like if I can get up on this upper and then bring it around like what it looks like. And I think that's too much. Man, that feels like too much topspin. I'll do a two and a half. I'm going to do one eight. It's 1.2 per ring. So that's about a ring and a half. Puts me about a ring and a half in the power. Max curl. Just a little teeny bit of overpower. Hitting it perfect. And let's see. Like this is the shot. Like you could come here. Oh, I think it's too much. It's going to roll over. It it, it, bounce, it hits a flat area there and it rolls out a little bit too much. So I've tried that shot several times and it's hard to get it up to the pin. And it does want to, because of the trajectory here, it does want to flatten out. So maybe... Even with a big dog, that I'm not sure if I like it up there at the top. I wanted to give it the try this week and really kind of look at it from the top. I've shot that shot several times where I, I missed the drive and then I just chipped it over to the spot so that I could really take a look at it. I've been there with my big dog. I've been there with a sniper. I've been there with a guardian. I've had a quasar, a titan. I've had several different balls looking at it. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure if I like, if I like it, but it is definitely a possibility. And I think it's easier to get up on the end down there than it is to get um, over to the left. Okay, from this bar right here, I got a perfect and a great to the right. Give myself two out of three ain't bad. That was a two ring great to the right, so that's probably going to miss. In the hole! And a perfect would have missed because there was uh, the wind did play a little bit of a factor even though I was that close. Can't be good, be lucky. I think we have just enough time for the shoot out here. So we got to play nine holes and we ended up with a whole one of, one of the tournament holes. I'm not sure. I think that that shot that I took right there is an option. And depending on the clubs that you have in your bag, it may be a better option because you may be finding yourself stuck in the rough a lot. If you've got an extra mile eight or you've got a bigger club where you can get down there I think the shot that my opponent took is probably, depending on your clubs, might be the the might be a good option. But I'm always reluctant because you're hoping that 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 you can get through the rough to get to the fairway. If you don't get into the rough or clip that rough when you come out into that fairway, or if you get caught up in that rough in between, then you're in a real spot of bother. I think the next time I get on this hole, I'm going to try that shot from down there. I haven't played that direction in a long time, but I'm going to try that shot. See what kind of wind we get. Very nice. Very nice. I wasn't paying attention to what kind of wind my opponent got. Looks like we got a little bit of headwind. Going to the right. 3-5. Apoc. And I don't have enough backspin. So I'm going to hit it from over here. I don't have enough backspin to stop that. Stop that nonsense. 3.5, it's 1.7 per ring, so there's 3.4. We'll put curl on it. Hit it one ring great on the outside. Maybe six rings great on the outside. Higher up on that hill you can get, the, the more it'll roll down towards the cup. But you pick up so much speed, if you don't hit the cup, <laughs> you may roll past it. Good game. Good game. All right. Look at that. We were able to get it all in. Good game.
Let's see what we got in that pen chest. We worked so hard for it. Let's see what we got in it. That'll be about the end of the video. Getting some, getting 26 gems. That's big. Some Saturns. Some big dogs. The claw. And a kingmaker. All right. That was, uh, that was the pen chest for the day. Just a few holes out there. I think I only got one of the holes that we were looking for, but uh, not too bad. Everybody be safe. And uh, tomorrow's uh, practice day. So I'm going to get up in the morning and go out with my auto account. I'm going to play a practice round. I'm probably going to just shoot the whole practice round in a row um, mm -hmm. just to go out there and see what we got going and get some notes. I've got some basic notes. I'll work mm -hmm. on some notes tonight, see if I can get uh, club stuff set up for tomorrow. And we will get at it. So everybody have a, uh, a good day and hopefully everybody have a good tournament next week. Thanks for watching.